Now the difference between a car nut and someone who simply likes cars is that the car nut will agonise over the small decisions. They will look at the small print about the process of going to drive that new car and they'll think about it for days. They won't sleep properly the night before. I didn't sleep very well last night just thinking about driving this new car. Here's a balmy one for you. Shoe choice. That's why we opened on shoes. I think that the pair of shoes I'm going to wear for that first drive in the M3 are crucial. Let's have a look at some options. The heavy boot to be avoided. The sort of smart, brothelly, creepery thing. Again, too bulky to be avoided. The training shoe, I like running, but it's no good for these purposes. Now we're getting closer. This is almost the perfect first driving dab, but she's a bit pongy, so I won't wear her. That's a sort of disco trainery thing. Light, good contact patch, good bit of feel through there. I like that. Again, to be avoided, the racing boot. I've heard it's happened before that a man has turned up to drive his new car wearing a racing boot. I only hope that someone shot him on the way home. Avoid. Reading material. You might have to spend some time waiting in the showroom before the car's brought out to you. Might I suggest this excellent weekly car magazine called Autocar. It's the original Car Weekly. It's also the world's oldest car magazine. Now for me, if you get the footwear right and you get the clothing right and you've got a copy of Autocar to read while you wait for the car to come out, there is only one more thing to get sorted, and it's crucial. What tunes do you listen to during those first few miles, those bonding miles with your new car? Here we go. Here's a selection of what I would like to listen to today. The editor's first album. I thought that was very good as well. Queens of the Stone Age. Is there a better rock band for driving? I don't think so. Foo Fighters, you can't really go wrong. This is controversial. Yes, Minister. You'll think I'm mad, but if you're stuck in a traffic jam, you don't want to be listening to the Queens of the Stone Age. You want to listen to Sir Humphrey talking absolute bobbins. Travelling Wilburys, yeah, good stuff, good driving music. Some sort of dancey business, because that can be quite good as well. Now, important don'ts. That looks like an A to you. That's an album by a band called The Prodigy. Avoid them like the plague, because you will overdrive the car, either crash it, get caught speeding, or over rev the engine. Likewise, ACDC, Nutter's music has its place, but not during that first drive. Other piece of kit? This thing, mobile phone. Statistically, you are more likely to have a problem with your car during that first drive than at any other time, and you want to be able to phone the garage to say, oi, come and get me. And now, having sorted footwear, very important, clothing, not quite so important, music, oh, tantamount to the most important thing you can do in a car, you're sorted, you are ready to go and drive your new car. Now before you even drive your new toy, please tell me you like me. You like to have a poke around, look at stuff, make sure it's all okay. Just sort of soak it all up. Maybe look for a few blemishes, come on. Things I've spotted about my new M3. Do you think that gap there is a bit odd? Like it's too wide or something. The panel gaps on the rest of the car are absolutely spot on, but where this skirt meets, there's this sort of crevice. That'll make no difference to the ownership proposition of this car but I find it a touch irritating. Maybe I'm sad, come round here. You'll think this one's even weirder. When you look here at this, this is called a satin finish line. It probably cost about 400 quid or something preposterous like that. There's some sealant under here and it's just about a millimetre proud. I've actually nudged it back in my thumb, but you just see there, it just comes out a bit. That marks me out as a very, very sad individual, but I've still noticed it. How about this as well? Get the camera in here. Now, obviously there's some wax in this thing to stop rust getting into crevices that aren't fully galvanized. But the way the wax just dribbles out on the bottom of the door there, it just looks like my dog's had a wee on the side of it. I find that irritating. And unless I'm mistaken, there is some orange peel on that paint. The paint job, okay, the color, I think the colour's fantastic, but there is some orange peel on just about every panel. A bit disappointing. OK, one more thing. One more thing. Have a look under here. So you're following me and my white M3, and you're probably thinking, who is that twerp in the white M3? I'm thinking, it's all white and silver, but when you look down here, the mounts that hold that massive back box on are bright red. It just looks really weird when you follow it. Two great big lumps of red rubber. Now, I'm playing devil's advocate because I think it's a wonderful looking car and I think it looks, oh, I think it looks so punchy and white. And none of these things really matter to me at all. I wouldn't reject the car because of them, but it's funny, isn't it? When it's something brand new and it really matters to you, you go over it with a tooth comb.
So you make the preparations, you choose the music, you get the perfect footwear on, you go through the rituals that you can't really explain to people that don't like cars because they make you look really quite weird. And then you get in the car like I am now. This car has now done 26 miles. So I've done 16 miles in my new car. And you know what? It's the most bloody frustrating thing on the planet. I can't stand it. I'm limited to 5,500 RPM. You can't get anywhere near that. You've got to nurse the gear change. You've got to nurse the brakes. Really, you want to get out and spank the thing stupid, and you can't. So you just saunter around. The unavoidable truth is that those first few special miles in your new car are the least fun you'll ever have with it. They're frustrating. I know that the E92 M3 is the car I've been wanting to run for yonks. I'm now in it, and I'm doing 50 miles an hour, and I'm not really enjoying it. The only feedback I can tell you is that when you use 5,500 RPM, the new M3 is A, quite boring, and B, not very fast. I have a solution to the problem. However, next week, when it's had its first little service, and it's done enough miles, and I'm allowed to make the rev counter needle go round to this bit here where it says 8, and there's a nice red blob, I'm going to drive it to the Nürburgring, and I'm going to rinse it over many laps of the Nordschleife. If that sounds over the top, then so be it. But after all this frustration, I think I deserve to give it a good go. Right, as we approach the tolls, I now know that I've not really nailed this car yet. I'm a little bit terrified. Uh, so if I look apprehensive and I don't say enough, I apologise. <laughs> yes, if you want to go skids, you can.